So then we kind of move on then. So what is the scientific model of sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and why might it occur? Uh, and again, I've got the, um, the model as proposed by Robert et al., which is a very good review summarizing all of the research in the area. So there's a couple of things that might explain why sarcoplasmic hypertrophy actually occurs. The first is that we have an increase in fluid edema within the muscle cell, so that's transient, and that explains that muscle pump. Um, we might also have mechanisms which allow the sarcoplasm to expand so that those myofibrils can fill the space. That's one of the ways, and I'm going to talk about all three in a, few, a bit more detail as we go through the next slide. And we might reach a myofibrillar protein accretion threshold, and this is a very speculative mechanism when we've done many years of resistance training, but I'll explain that when we get to it in the slide. So let's have a look at the first one. When we go to the gym and we perform resistance training, essentially, as we do eccentric movements, eccentric movements are when we're lengthening the muscle under tension. So if I'm doing a bicep curl, as I lift, I'm doing a concentric contraction, but as I lower it, that's an eccentric cont contraction and my muscle is under load and it's causing damage to my myofibers, which then starts this whole process of repair. So when we get this trauma, what happens is that the blood flowing in the capillaries enables the protein, the amino acids, to go into the, the interstitium, into the, to, to the actual muscle cell, and it also allows fluid ions, electrolytes to move into the muscle cell as well. So we have an accumulation of fluid as a result of the damage to the muscle following training. So we get this edema, we have increased amounts of water in the muscle and that contributes to the pump. We also have large proteins like albumin and they go into the uh, area here and attract even further water. Uh, so we get more water going around the myofibrils. Um, and essentially what happens is that the sarcoplasm expands and it, it, the, the cross-sectional area of the muscle increases. But this is transient, so this is what you would see when you take your top off in the changing room. By the time you get home, this fluid has gone back out, in, out of the cell again and you've lost that pump. This is one of the ways in which you might, we might get sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Another way is sarcoplasmic hy hypertrophy might actually be a mechanism which contributes to, to growth. So this accumulation of fluid within the muscle cell might actually make you stronger. And there's two mechanisms that have been proposed for this. The first is the sarcoplasm expansion hypothesis of hypertrophy. Now we need to look at these diagrams to see what's going on. And essentially what we can see is that um, we've got our muscle cell here, we've got the myofibrils, this is the sarcolemma, the white part is the sarcoplasm, and this is the satellite cell. And essentially with this expansion hypothesis of hypertrophy, we're increasing the sarcoplasmic volume, so we're increasing the fluid within the muscle cell to allow space for the myofibrils to grow with the myofibrillar hypertrophy process. So we're basically making the cell larger before we pack it with more myofibrils. That's one explanation for why we might get fluid into the muscle as a result of training, okay? Um, and then obviously as you get the triggering, or sorry, as the sarcolemma expands, it triggers the satellite cells, they become activated, and that's when we get the myofibrillar protein. So you go to the gym, you get an accu accumulation of fluid, that fluid pushes the sarcolemma wall, uh, expands it, the expansion of the wall activates the satellite cells, which enables the growth of new myofibrils. And so you're creating the space for the myofibril. And that's why it's called the sarcoplasm expansion hypothesis hypertrophy. So that's one way in which the fluid might actually be contributing to an increase in strength. Now, mechanism two is the myofibril, uh, myofibril expansion hypothesis of hypertrophy is the, 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 kind of like an opposite thing going on really because um, what happens in here is that the myofibrils grow as they normally would so you have an increase in uh, mRNA expression and the ribosomes are encoding um, uh, or producing the protein amino acids uh, so we have a growth in myofibril number and what they do is they pack into the very the small muscle area and they push the sarcolemma wall outwards so that's one way we get expansion of the sarcoplasm and obviously if the wall is ex pushed out we get more fluid in, in, in the sarcoplasm as well um, and so essentially what we ha what's happening is the we're not having expansion occurring before we're having the myofibrils increasing in number and pushing on the sarcolemma wall to expand it so that's one, one of the ways so if we just go back to this slide here 
here we have an increased fluid into the cell to amount, allow space for the myofibrils to grow, but here th th that process isn't happening. We're just having out and out growth of the myofibrils, which is pushing the sarcolemma wall outwards, allowing more fluid in, and we get sarcoplasmic hypertrophy that way. So the, these are the two mechanisms for how sarcoplasmic hypertrophy might contribute to fiber growth. Now there is a a third mechanism, and this is very speculative, okay, and in this, what we're having is, so it's, it's reaching a kind of protein accretion threshold, okay, and this happens after many, many years of training. So let's have a look at this picture and see what's happening. So we've got muscle fiber cross-sectional area, which continues to increase as we go through many years of training. So we start off at a pre-training level, but then we get an increase, as, as we were saying in the previous presentation, 30% increase in the cross-sectional area of the muscle fiber, um, increased myofibrillar hypertrophy, that's all fine. Um, but then at some point, we have a threshold where we get almost, almost like the, the, the process of growing new muscle fibers becomes fatigued, it becomes tired out. Okay, so we don't get any further uh, increase in myofibrils. So we reach this myofibril accretion threshold. Accretion basically means accumulating something over a long period of time. Okay, so we reach this. We might reach this threshold, and then any further hypertrophy that we get in the muscle is due to an increase in fluid into the sarcoplasm. Okay, so it might be that you know after many many years of training, we reach our maximum in terms of how much myofibrillar hypertrophy we can get. We then get stress on all of the factors that are involved in myofibrillar hypertrophy, and then any further increase in size is due to um, uh, sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. And this is a very speculative mechanism. This is a mechanism proposed by Roberts et al., uh, but it's speculative, uh, it's not definitive, there's not enough scientific evidence to show that this actually happens, but it's been hypothesized based on our current understanding of what happens in, in the muscle. Just a summary of what we've discussed in this part of the lecture. Um, hopefully it kind of makes, makes sense and gives you a little bit more appreciation of what happens in your muscle following a resistance training session, like the physiological changes. Um...